Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for joining me. I'm your host, Sherry. I wanted to talk to you guys about something a little different and out of the ordinary. I tell you guys stories about murders and disappearances and kidnappings a lot, but today I want to talk to you about the Mandela Effect. The Mandela Effect is something that a mass amount of people remember happening, but never really happened, a false memory. The definition of the Mandela Effect is a situation in which a large mass amount of people believe an event occurred when it did not. It comes from the story of Nelson Mandela, who was the South American president from 1994 to 1999. Nelson Mandela served 27 years in prison beginning in 1962 and being released in the beginning of 1990. Mandela retired from politics in 1999, but he remained a global advocate for peace and social justice until his death in December of 2013. So when Nelson Mandela died in 2013, so many people were saying how they thought he had died in the 1980s while he was in prison. There were even politicians that swore they attended his funeral and everything. But he didn't die in the 80s. He was in prison during that time and then released. Then he becomes the president of South America. So he is this well-known celebrity. He died in 2013, but people are convinced he died in the 80s while in prison. There are folks I've come across that swear they remember seeing his funeral on TV when they were kids. People also remember his wife giving a speech about his death. This is where the term Mandela effect comes from. Thousands of people sharing the same false memory. Some hardcore conspiracy theorists believe this is a form of a parallel universe, like there's alternate universes present present in society, while doctors seem to think it's a form of honest lying. A person creates a false memory without intending to lie or deceive others. Instead, they're attempting to fill in gaps in their own memory. I'm going to give you some examples I've gathered. Some of these really blew my mind. I want to start with an obvious one that you guys have probably already heard of, the Berenstein Bears. I grew up on these books, and my children read them a lot, too. Stan and Jan Berenstein were a married couple that wrote hundreds of books for children. The Berenstein Bears have become a household staple. Most houses who have kids have a Berenstein Bears book laying around somewhere. All these years, I've been calling them the Berenstain Bears, but if you look closely at the titles of the books, it's actually the Berenstain Bears, B-E-R-E-N-S-T-A-I-N. I don't know why myself and so many others seem to think it was called the Berenstain Bears, but we've been wrong all these years. I even found my old Berenstain Bears book from when I was a kid, and sure enough, it reads Berenstain Bears on the cover. Another example of the Mandela effect comes from Star Wars. So in 1980, a movie comes out called Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back. Darth Vader quotes a line that has been repeated by every young boy and girl from 1980 to 2020. Luke, I am your father, except he never said that. He said, no. I am your father. I know I've seen tons of people dressed up as Darth Vader on Halloween and they go around saying, Luke, I am your father. Even in the movie Tommy Boy, Chris Farley's character is doing a robot voice into the fan and he's saying, Luke, I am your father. In 2004, James Earl Jones, who played Darth Vader, was interviewed for a documentary about Star Wars, and even he said he remembered saying, Luke, I am your father. But the film has been viewed a billion times, and each one has the same line, no, I am your father. Another movie quote that people get wrong all the time comes from the 1991 film, The Silence of the Lambs. So Clarice Starling is on her way to meet Dr. Hannibal Lecter. She's walking through this prison and she's being harassed by inmates. They're throwing things at her and saying some really offensive phrases to her. She's even pelted with semen as she's walking down the hallway of of these prison cells. When she gets to Dr. Lecter's cell, and he's a very quiet gentleman who appears way more mature than the other prisoners, there is this real intense scene. He greets her by saying, good morning, and that's it. Most people seem to think he says, hello, Clarice. No one knows where the hello, Clarice came from, 
but people, including myself, swear that he said it. I can picture the whole scene in my mind, and I'm honestly shocked that he never said, Hello, Clarice. I even replayed the movie to confirm. It's currently on Netflix if you guys want to check it out. This is the film's most wide-known line, and it never freaking existed. I thought maybe it was our brains trying to make things sound more generic, but how much more generic can you get than good morning? Bottom line is that Hannibal Lecter never once said, hello, Clarice, in the silence of the lambs. When Anthony Hopkins was asked about this line, he's like, I don't know why people think I said that. Do you guys remember Curious George? He was this cute little monkey that always used to get into mischief and was causing trouble for his owner. Well, if you ask me to draw a picture of Curious George, I'm going to draw him with all of his parts. The problem is that Curious George never had a tail. Like, I distinctly remember him using his tail to help him swing on tree branches, and I thought he had a balloon tied to it in one part of a book. He's been a part of children's literature since 1941, and there's no tale. Get on your phone and Google a, a photo of Curious George. You'll see it never existed. I think we look back on him and just picture his little body, and our mind makes up the rest. For example, we may only remember 60% of what Curious George looked like, so the other 40% is designed in our mind. Everyone would assume this monkey had a tail like the other monkeys in the world, but for some reason, he just doesn't have one. There's even a scene where Curious George visits the zoo and goes over to the monkey enclosure, and all of them have tails. People speculate that Curious George was actually an ape, which is the reason he walks around with no tail. And Curious George is going to be on my list twice because people, especially myself, seem to believe there was this live-action Curious George movie but one never existed, and people seem to think that it did and claim to re remember a movie poster and everything, especially parents my age who think back to, like, the early 2000s. I swear I remember there was a Curious George live-action movie. Matthew Broderick played the man in the yellow hat. I know I've seen a commercial for it or a trailer for the movie, but I cannot find it anywhere. The only thing I can come up with so I don't feel like I'm going crazy is that Matthew, Matthew Broderick around this time actually played Inspector Gadget in the live action Inspector Gadget movie. So maybe I'm subconsciously confusing Inspector Gadget for the man in the yellow hat. There is some very recent talks about a new Curious George live action movie, but the oh, but it's not the one that we all seem to remember. Curious George certainly lives up to his name since we're all so curious about his mysteriousness. Next, I want you to think about the cereal Frosted Flakes. Think about when you're grocery shopping and you're in the cereal aisle or when you've seen a commercial for Frosted Flakes. Think long and hard about Tony the Tiger. I would picture him being orange and, and having this orange and black body with this red bandana or scarf type thing. What color is his nose? Well, his nose is actually blue. If I was asked to draw a picture of Tony the Tiger, I would have never thought to give, him, to give him a blue nose. Tigers don't have blue noses. I guess someone in their mascot concept department thought that having a blue nose would make him seem more friendly or cartoonish than having the normal tiger look. And speaking of cereal, I also want to include Fruit Loops. How is Fruit Loops spelled on the box? Well, think back and remember the box. It had a bowl of Fruit Loops on it and Toucan Sam. It was spelled F-R-O-O-T loops, not Fruit Loops, F-R-U-I-T. If you asked me to, to describe the logo on the box, I wouldn't have spelled it the way that the logo sells. So the Fruit of the Loom logo has been included in Mandela Effect discussions for a while, and it seems to be one of the strongest examples. Some claim there is a cornucopia with fruit coming out of it, but there's actually just some fruit hanging there. I've looked at every logo dating back to 1893, and not a single one contained a cornucopia of any kind or a basket. I asked two people recently what they remember the Fruit of the Loom logo looking like, one remembered that it was just some hanging fruit, and another remembered a cornucopia with fruit coming out of it. How do so many people remember a cornucopia? Why does everyone remember the same thing, but it was never there? 
The company has stated there has never been a cornucopia in their logo design. There are some former employees that even claim to remember a cornucopia, but it was never there. So if you think back to childhood when you watched the movie Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, remember the famous line, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Well, that line was never said. The evil queen actually said, magic mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? I didn't believe this one, so I actually pulled up the scene, and sure enough, she says, magic mirror on the wall. I remember being a kid and saying, mirror, mirror on the wall. I looked at some data on this, and 88% of folks asked, said they remember her saying, mirror, mirror on the wall. This is a collective mishearing of one word. In the movie Shrek, Lord Farquaad even says it to his mirror before his dating game scene. In the 1980s movie, The Gremlins, there is a bad guy gremlin who many remember being named as Spike. Even people, even by people that watch the movie a lot and even own Spike stuffed animals, but his name wasn't Spike, it was Stripe. Not once was he called Spike in the movie, but people seem to remember this being his name. Another example of the Mandela effect is people seem to remember Looney Tunes being spelled like Looney Tunes, T-O-O-N-S. You think it would be spelled like this because it's shorthand for, you know, cartoons? It's actually just Looney Tunes, T-U-N-E-S, like a musical style spelling. This is strange to me because when you think back to Looney Tunes, they're not really remembered for their musical performances, but rather just being a silly cartoon. The Monopoly game contains a character named Rich Uncle Pennybags or Mr. Monopoly. I remember him on the board. People swear he was wearing a monocle, but he didn't. If you look up the game, you'll see he's not wearing one. This is due to your mind merging the character with Mr. Peanuts, who is the, the planner's mascot who does in fact wear a monocle. Rich Uncle Pennybags is wearing a top hat just like Mr. Peanut, but there's no monocle. So basically what your mind is doing is taking this planner's mascot, Mr. Peanut, and Rich Uncle Pennybags, and you're just merging the two characters. The next one kind of blew my mind. So do you guys remember those videos on TV in the 80s when Ed McMahon would show up to your house with a large publisher's clearinghouse check and the person would answer the door and get super excited and hug, and hug Ed McMahon? Well, Ed McMahon never worked for Publishers Clearinghouse and never showed up to anyone's house. People just remember him being there with a giant oversized cardboard check and a bottle of champagne. It was their prize group, but none of them were Ed McMahon. At the time, Publishers Clearinghouse didn't really make an effort to correct this misconception. They thought of it as kind of a blessing. It was free advertising people because people thought, you know, Ed McMahon was working for them. I also seem to remember my dad getting these mailing advertisements for Publishers Clearinghouse, and they were embossed and shiny and had Ed McMahon's face on them. The only thing that I can find is that Ed McMahon worked for their competitor company called American Family Publishers, but he was never a person who went out on knocked on doors with a big camera crew. Where does this false memory come from? And there's one that I have been correct about all these years, but some people aren't. So when you think about peanut butter brands, what do you think of? For me, I think of Jif, Skippy, Peter Pan, Reese's, the store brand. Some people think there is a brand called Jiffy. And what you're doing is you're combining two of the biggest peanut butter brands into one. Jif plus Skippy equals Jiffy. There is no brand called Jiffy. It is instead called Jif and then another brand called Skippy. Another reason people may think that the Jif logo is that the that the peanut butter is actually called Jiffy is because the Jif logo takes up the whole front of the jar. Perhaps when you're looking at the front of the jar, you may assume that the words continue onto the jar where you can't see it because it's on the side. The next one I was skeptical about talking about because I just know there's some diehard Star Wars fans out there and I don't want to get any hate mail about this. I'm not a huge Star Wars fan like some people are, but I'll tell you guys anyway. 
So C-3PO is a character in Star Wars. When you think of him, you think of a character that is a robot and he's completely gold. Well, he actually has one silver leg from the knee down. Just a portion of him is silvered, you know, just half a leg. If you look up a photo of him, you'll see what I mean. Now, I know there's some Star Wars fan out there that's going to correct me and say, well, in this one obscure episode, he had an all gold body or that's how he was originally made. But most of the time he had a silver leg. But people remember him being all gold. Now, in the 80s, the C-3PO toy figures were made all gold. I think the reason for this is that the toy company wasn't going to do a separate die cast for this half a leg, so they just made the whole thing gold. Either way, I've never realized that he had a a silver leg in all the movie scenes that I've seen. And real quickly, Pikachu from Pokemon is another one. People swear that Pikachu has this black tip on the end of his tail, but every photo of him shows just the tail being all yellow. I asked my seven-year-old daughter what color Pikachu's tail is because she's a huge Pokemon fan. She said black and yellow. And perhaps my favorite example of the Mandela effect is that 90s kids like myself seem to remember the actor Sinbad starring in a movie where he played a genie and the name of the movie is Shazam. He never starred in this movie, nor was there ever a movie called Shazam about a genie. There was a movie in the 90s that starred Shaquille O'Neal and it was called Kazam. Shaq played this 500-year-old genie that was trapped in a boombox. It would be really difficult to mistake Shaq for Sinbad because they look completely different, but people claim there is a movie called Shazam and even know specific details about the movie. One former Blockbuster Video employee states that he remembered families renting it all the time when it came out. This employee also states that one mom came in and complained that the video playback on the VHS cassette was distorted, so they removed that particular VHS tape from circulation. I was reading that one Reddit user was so convinced he owned the movie Shazam that he went to his parents' house, got up in the attic, and started going through all the boxes of old VHS cassette tapes but never found it. People can remember exact scenes from the movie as well. Sinbad was questioned about the movie, and he stated he never played a genie in a movie called Shazam. He even offered $1,000 to anyone who could provide a physical copy of the movie. He's like, I don't know where the hell y'all come up with this stuff, but I wasn't no damn genie. And that's what he was quoted as saying. (laughs) He since gave up on trying to convince people he wasn't in this movie, nor was the movie ever made. He just kind of rolls with it now. Some fans have even designed movie posters and everything. This whole thing brought up the new version of Aladdin where Will Smith plays the genie. People were upset and said, you know, Sinbad should have gotten this role because he could finally have his moment as a genie that so many people remember. I think it would have been cool to see see him in that form. But for now, Sinbad never played a genie and there was no movie called Shazam in the 90s. Some doctors believe the Mandela effect is a form of confabulation. A common analogy for confabulation is honest lying. A person creates a false memory without intending to lie or deceive others. Instead, they're attempting to fill in gaps in their own memory. They say your brain only remembers 45% of what you see. You make up the rest. But the fact that so many people falsely remember things that are the same is strange. It's hard to believe something that is just as vivid as all your other memories, especially when so many other people believe it to be true as well. A study was conducted a few years ago on false memory. When you were in school, you you most likely learned that Alexander Hamilton was a founding father. When adults were asked who Alexander Hamilton was, most stated that he was a former U.S. president. They were even given the optional answer as being a founding father since it was a multiple choice question. A majority remember being taught that he was a U.S. president, and he never was. He is, in fact, on the $10 bill, which may be why some people think he was a president. The Mandela effect continues to be hotly debated, you know, despite reasonable evidence that it's more likely explained in terms of hair, you know, error in human memory 
rather than some form of parallel universes at work. If you know of any other instances of the Mandela effect, let me know because I would love to hear them. I hope you guys enjoyed this one-off episode and I'll be back next week with more gruesome stuff. Take care and as always, much love to you all.